This is a short introduction to uh, the robot that uh, you are going to enhance or innovate so that it can uh, compete in the Robocop D2 Robocop competition. I will show you um, a little bit of what the robot is capable of doing before you start. And uh, so this is sort of the basis that, uh, that you can build from. You haven't got much time to, to make it compete on the, in the competition, but uh, I will give you a little bit brief overview of what it can. It is here on, on the picture, you can see. I will take it a little bit closer and show you uh, what it is. We've got a robot oops, um, with three wheels. One, two, three, two fairly big motors and a caster wheel in the front. So, um, and what else do we have here? We have um, a camera, the red one here is a camera. We have mounted a server um, so that we can use as an actuator uh, to do something on the track. And then we have a box with some uh, pre-built electronics. I will come back to that in a later video, what's, what's in there, but we can have a look. There's, um, there's a Raspberry Pi on the top here and there's a lot of wires and some uh, electronics in the basement too and, uh, and a lot of other things. We'll close the lid for now and um, on here on the front there is a small display and that is to help getting in contact with the robot. So um, we'll see what it can do. Uh, put it back on the track and um, it can be controlled by a gamepad um, so it works just like a, um, a radio controlled or remote controlled uh, vehicle that's not that's very nice but uh, it's not very much more than that um, and this control is designed by someone either using a, a flying with an aircraft because you are only using this uh, but that means that you can with one hand control it so uh, turn and go forward back and forward so um, we'll put it back here at the start position so that's how to operate it. Um, what can it do? Yeah, I didn't show you at the bottom there is a line sensor, but I will turn it on now. So I'll press the green button here and it will do, it will start a mission. There's no really mission uh, in the robot right now, but there's some low level control that can do a lot of things. So um, we'll try to do that. I'll press the green button and we'll see what happens. You can see the blue light starts at the bottom and now it follows the line and it does that and you, it peeped a couple of times and that was the servo. This servo <laughs> has a strange sound. And then it goes, that was triggered when, um, when the robot uh, saw this uh, crossing line or this uh, uh, yeah, crossing line, that's what it's called. Um, when it saw that, it uh, changed the position of the servo and for two seconds and um, then it moved slowly forward. We can try to do it again. I will take back control by pressing one of the buttons here and uh, I can move it back by the remote control and we can do it again and see if it was um, just an, an incident or an accident there or random. So I'll press the button again and see if we can do it again. It starts by trying to follow the line and once it sees the, the line, it will turn the servo and then go slowly forward. So um, that's some of the things it can do. And um, I will then give you a little bit of um, overview of what is inside. And I have a block diagram here. Um, I showed you there was a Raspberry Pi inside and this is the Raspberry Pi and the gamepad that I had, this one, 
is connected to the Raspberry Pi. The small display on top is also here. Um, and there is connection to the camera. It also has speakers, so um, it can make a little bit of noise. I can, if I press the blue button. No, it doesn't do that right now, but it should be able to do that. Um, so, and the speaker can be mostly used for debugging, so it can say whenever the, it is in a mission that now I reach this state and uh, or I'm looking for something. And um, mission control, that's a green box here, that's a piece of software. And uh, we have a base software that you're going to modify or replace by some new software. And it's based on uh, OpenCV uh, together with a camera. It um, talks to the hardware, the wheels are down here. Um, the three wheels, two of them with motors. And there's another a board in the base of the box that controls the wheels. And it can do a short mission, and that's what we did just right now. So we didn't have any mission up here, the green one is not existing. So we were using this one only. It cannot do very long missions, but it can do short missions. And it has interface to some sensors, um, the edge control or the line sensor. Uh, at distance, there's a few distance sensors. There's an IMU, inertial measurement unit, and that can be used to see if the robot is uh, running uphill or downhill or, has, uh, or is turning. It can also be used for that. And it also has the servo that uh, we saw um, or heard, maybe more, more correct, um, heard squeaking at some point in time. It also controls the battery. Um, the battery is a, a lithium polymer battery, uh, which means that it cannot um, sustain, it will, it will die if it's discharged too much. And that's this board that is controlling that. It will turn off the robot if the battery voltage goes below, I think it's 10 volts. So basically, this is it. Uh, I can show you the base board. Looks like it looks like this. It has a microprocessor, um, and uh, all the other um, power supply for a lot of things. Um, it was hidden below all the wires in there, but that is what we call a regbot. That's a robot that we have for uh, linear control one. But here it's extended with a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi doesn't do much right now. To be able to program it, we have a user interface, and I'll show you that. This is the user interface. Um, and if we look here on the left, it's green. It um, has a connection, a network connection. And if we remember this, well, take this one back. This board with a short mission <coughs> is connected to the Raspberry Pi uh, into a box or a piece of software called the Robot Bridge. And that will publish all the capabilities of the RegBot to a socket called 24001 to the network, uh, Wi-Fi or cable. It's the Raspberry Pi, so we can do both. And we have a graphical user interface, and that's the one I've got down here, so we can talk to this board. This one doesn't do much. It allows the gamepad to control it, but apart from that, and, and shows the battery voltage here. So the GUI looks like this, and it has got a network address. Here in, in my place, uh, I'm using this network address, but the good thing is that it um, it's visible on the small display on, on top of the robot. Um, it, this robot is called Melina. Uh, the battery voltage is now 11.3 uh, volts and it has been running since power on for 300 seconds. Um, and here is a start and stop button. That's basically the same that I used. If I press start, the robot will probably start driving. We'll give it a try. No, nothing happens. And that's because I have it now in manual control. And then this doesn't do anything. So uh, if I press this big button, I will turn it to auto. And now it's doing what it was told. 
dropped you into automatic mode, which is not good because it was looking for a line. I will move it back. So this is the left panel. Um, we have uh, some tabs up here and there is more tabs available. Uh, we don't need, for instance, control. That, well, it's a little bit more advanced. We'll not do, talk about that today. Um, edge is the edge control and that is the, the line center. I can turn it on here and then we can see that it is in fact looking at a line. It says left edge of the line is one, it's more or less centimeters um, away from the center and the right edge that's uh, three centimeters away from the center. Both are positive right now. We can see the values here change and uh, there is some um, yeah, stuff here. I'll get back to the calibration in a later video. Now we are just talking about what it can do and these short missions. And there is a tab here called Mission. And um, this is, um, I'll remove this. This is the mission that we just ran. Uh, it, it's a fairly simple interpreter of uh, very simple uh, commands. Um, the first line here is what it starts by doing. It says vel equals 0 0.3 um, and that means velocity 0 0.3 meters per second. Um, and then there's a colon. Um, it starts of course by saying this is the velocity we should run and the colon says when should it stop? When are we finished with this uh, line? Oh, when do we continue away from this line? And it's called LV. There's a, a keyword called LV and that means line valid. When the robot is away from the line, then the line is not valid. And um, uh, 20 is the maximum value that uh, this uh, validity, it can change from zero, that means no line, and it will then increase up to 20 um, if it sees a line. So it could be that there's some dirt on the line and then it will decrease, but it'll probably soon see the line again and then it'll go up to 20. So. Here we say we want it, um, this, it should continue until the line value is 20. Then it, uh, there is a line and then we go on to the next one. We should continue with the same velocity. We actually didn't need to, to say it. It will continue until it's changed. And then there's another command called HL. It means follow the left side of the, of the line. Um, and it's a zero, that means just uh, to keep the left edge of the line in the center of the line center. It can be plus or minus two, so if we want to, to go a little bit more to the left or to the right. It says, um, the next one, with a, after a comma, says the uh, white equals one. And um, that is because we are following a white line. Actually, it cannot follow a black line, so uh, white is the only valid option. Um, then there's a colon, and as we saw before, the colon says, uh, uh, what, uh, when are we finished by doing this command? And it says dist equal one, and that means for one meter. But it also says something else. It says XL uh, larger than 15, and XL means crossing line, and the crossing line detector um, will also increase from zero, that means not a crossing line, to 20. Um, but crossing line is a little bit more fragile, so I don't expect it to go to 20. Um, I will accept that if we have seen it 15 times, after 15 milliseconds, then that's sufficient, then we'll continue. Or, there's another comma, and all these are or. It says LV, that was the same we had up here, line valid. If that gets lower than three, that means it has lost a line, then we should continue anyhow. So um, when we are finished with this line, either one meter crossing line or we have lost a line, then we set the velocity to zero, we stop, and then we say servo number two, and the P servo means position of the servo should be minus 300. It goes from minus 500 to plus 500, as far as I remember. It could be a thousand. Ah. Yeah, and um, 
it will order that right away. But we still have a colon here, and now it says time equals one. That means we will stay on this line for one second. And uh, then one, once that second is passed, we'll go on to the next one. So, uh, zero velocity, servo two, and now we change the position of the servo to plus 100 for another second. Once that is uh, the time is passed, then we say velocity equals 0 0.1. That means 10 centimeters per second, fairly slow. And this equals 0 0.3, so we'll go slowly forward 30 centimeters. Um, we can um, send that, we can change that. Um, if I say the velocity is uh, minus 1, that means it goes backwards. Uh, for these 30 centimeters, I can uh, remove these two. We don't want these two anymore. So once it has seen the line, then it just goes slowly backwards. So that should be the case now. I can check whether it's okay, and it says no errors found. It's again a fairly simple software. It will not find everything. Um, but maybe if I say instead of a colon, I would put a semicolon in one place, and then it says error on line 3, um, near will equals 0 0.3 semicolon. Okay, it doesn't say that it's a semicolon, but I know it is a semicolon. So I'll change it back, and now it's okay. I can save it to the robot. I can show you another thing. There's a help button, and if I press help, it will show. It's too big to show on the screen here, but it will give a few, a few uh, explanations. For instance, what is the dry values? That means before the colon. And for instance, vel equals velocity in meters per second. Positive is forward. There's an hr, hl, follow line, h left and right. I'll close this one again. So now we have modified uh, the code. I, and I saved it to the robot. Um, and it will do that until I turn off the robot. But I can also um, save it. I can save it to flash over here. There's a button, save to flash. And now it says it has saved 519 bytes out of, out of 4,000. We can't see that. Well, I can move this one. Um, so it has a space for 4,000 bytes. Um, but this doesn't take that much. So now we should do that. We can give it a try and see if it works. So I'll remove this and I will take the remote control and run the robot back to the starting position and see if it works. Press the green button and so now it follows the line as before. And now it didn't wave with the rope or servo, but it just moves backwards 30 centimeters and then it's finished. So that works. So um, that is some of the capabilities of the robot. And um, I'll get back to calibration and other stuff in a moment.